The butterfly pull-up, possibly one of the most controversial movements in CrossFit. It's the fuel for internet trolls and CrossFit haters all around the world. Being considered as dangerous looking and kind of looking like a dolphin swimming or fish out of water. Describe what you think the butterfly pull-up looks like in the comments down below. Today's video, however, is not just gonna be bagging out this ridiculous looking movement. I will break down the origins of the butterfly pull-up, how it got its popularity, the differences between a strict, kipping, and butterfly pull-up, and finally, the pros and cons of the butterfly pull-up itself. Even though this movement made CrossFit famous, any publicity is good publicity, right? So strap in, grab some movie snacks, and like the video. Let's get into it. We will start from the beginning with the origins of the butterfly pull-up and how it became in the sport of CrossFit. When we think about sport, we think about elite athletes putting their bodies through the worst physical and mental stress possible to achieve an outcome, ergo, to win. The top 1% of these athletes become champions. However, in every single sport imaginable, there are athletes and coaches trying to develop a way to make the task easier. If there's a will, there's a way. What I mean by that is, if you can follow the rules, but bend them slightly to make it a little bit more efficient for you, even in the long-term effects are negative, would you do it? For your average Joe out there, probably not. But for an elite athlete whose very life depends on winning, absolutely. Let's take a look at some examples from some other sports. Olympic weightlifting has the hip drive. Powerlifting has the back arch. CrossFit has, well, the butterfly pull-up and kipping handstand push-ups, but that's a later video for you guys. The origins of the butterfly pull-up was first seen back in the 2007 CrossFit Games which by the way, was out in the backyard of Greg Glassman's gym. It was pioneered though, however, by a man named Brett Marshall, who was just making his life a little easier. Because of his introduction of this technique, it changed CrossFit for the good. With anyone who's anyone serious about CrossFit needing to learn this technique to get that edge, those few extra repetitions, and well, it's just because it's a lot more efficient. So now you know exactly how the butterfly pull-up all began. But I see comments on the internet all the time like this one saying things like kipping, when in reality they actually mean butterfly. So what they're referring to is this. Not this, this. Not this one, winner, loser. So let's break it down, make it simple for you guys who don't participate in CrossFit. So simply, there are four types of pull-ups generally performed on the rig. Before you have a go at me being like, there's actually more than four, Tyler. Look, I get it. The chin up is technically counted as a pull up. However, it doesn't have pull up in the name. So it's not something we're going to run through today, but I understand it's real. The scat pull up. A primer for your regular pull ups. The scat pull up focuses on the bottom portion of the pull up, engaging the lats and the back. This is generally used as either a primer or a warm up movement for doing pull ups, or alternatively, it is used for beginners looking at increasing some lat size and activation in that bottom part. Very important movement. That transitions us into the strict pull up. A staple of strength, the strict pull up is a movement many strive to do being a requirement for many emergency service and military entrance or basic training courses, the strict pull-up is the true definition of upper body strength. Every man and woman generally strives to be able to do at least one strict pull-up. The kipping pull-up. Not to be confused by the butterfly pull-up, the kipping pull-up was developed for gymnasts looking to get a bit more volume in their training. The pull-up itself adds hips to create momentum. Now this is used in gymnasts or gymnastics in exercises performed both on the rig and on the rings. The kipping pull-up allows gymnasts to perform more reps without fatiguing and being able to recover to be able to go again and again and again. Finally, the butterfly pull-up. A movement designed for both intensity and competition, the butterfly pull-up uses the kip combined with a full rotation of the shoulder joint to create a circular motion with your body. The chin extends over the bar momentarily before descending back into the hollow position. This is what is considered a repetition. The butterfly pull-up is for entertainment purposes and has really not many benefits to it. 
Apart from increasing intensity and allowing you to move more efficiently, the butterfly pull-up was designed by a crossfitter to increase the output in competition. Now you guys understand the difference between the pull-ups. Let's talk about the pros and cons of the butterfly pull-up. Now I know you guys love me hammering CrossFit, especially like an Asian billionaire hammering his sugar baby. So let's start with the bad news first. From the outside, the butterfly pull-up looks a little bit ridiculous, unnecessary, and kind of dangerous. All these statements are true. If you're an avid CrossFitter, you just have to think for a moment. Why the fuck are we doing the butterfly pull-up? What benefits does this thing have to my overall health? How is doing 100 butterfly pull-ups going to get me fitter? When CrossFit speaks about finding, quote unquote, the fittest on earth, that statement is swept under the rug as soon as these zealots jump onto the rig and start swinging around like a whirly bird during a hurricane. Let's start talking about the risk of injury that the butterfly pull-up brings. Now, of course, performing a butterfly pull-up has high impact on your shoulders, putting your rotator cuffs under increasing pressure and wearing out the joint faster than normal. But you don't actually hear often of many top-level CrossFit athletes injuring themselves with that butterfly technique. It's generally because the injuries are all in untrained or beginner athletes. Here's an example of how. I'm going to bring back Deborah from the old video. Good old Debs. Deborah is an untrained or beginner CrossFit athlete. What do you want to consider her as? The pull-up for her is massively demoralizing movement, especially when she uses six to eight bands hooked up to the rig, and it requires four people around her to get that band down onto to her foot. She knows that tons of CrossFit benchmark workouts include the pull-up. Fran, Cindy, Barbara, Murph, Jackie, etc. So she works with the coach on her kipping pull-ups. Now we know what a kipping pull-up is. It's not a butterfly, completely functional, great movement. Unfortunately for Deborah, it's Fran today. 21-15-9, thrusters and pull-ups. Now, instead of doing her strict pull-ups and using half the gym's band supply, Deborah has a great idea. She decides to use that newfound skill that her and her coach have been working through, the kipping pull-up. The workout starts and she smashes out her thrusters, killing it. Then she jumps onto the rig and hits out seven kipping pull-ups. Not only is this a new PB for her, but she's already cut down a third of the reps in that first round. She takes a breather and looks up to see Derek, the gym's elite athlete, literally lapping her on the workout because he strung together 21 butterfly pull-ups effortlessly. This makes Deborah feeling pretty shit right about now. So, later that day, during the next class, Deborah attempts some butterfly pull-ups, without her coach's knowledge, of course, and everything's going well. They're way faster than kipping, and bam. She feels a sharp pain in her rotator cuff. You know what comes next. Six weeks off, and now you can't do anything upper body. Now, that's just purely an example. Yes, I understand, rotating in that fashion cannot be great for your shoulders. However, in a well-trained CrossFit athlete, with a minimum of 10 strict pull-ups and 10 strict ring dips, they have the shoulder strength and stability to perform butterfly pull-ups with low risk of damaging the joints. Low, once again, not no, low. As I mentioned in my example, Deborah cannot even do one strict pull-up. This is why her risk of injury is super high, making a movement like this dangerous for her. The butterfly pull-up is one of those movements as a CrossFit athlete that you kind of cringe doing, even though I do them myself. Performing the butterfly pull-up all the time, I don't agree with doing it. However, the demands of the sport require me to, if I am to compete at a higher level. Butterflying doesn't really create a strength-building stimulus. It's relatively dangerous. From the outside, it pushes people away from CrossFit. It's hard to tell whether a rep is successful or not. People with beards have an advantage. It's not a functional movement. It doesn't have a place in anybody's movement library, and it creates uncertainty in the sport. However, the butterfly pull-up has done something for the sport of CrossFit it has created a more entertaining experience for the viewers. Nothing is more depressing than smashing out your first 10 strict pull-ups, only to fatigue to go ones and twos until you hit the required reps. The butterfly pull-up installs and increases the intensity of your workout, and it does make Murph a little bit easier. In my opinion, removing or unpopularizing the use of the butterfly pull-up would reduce the toxicity around the sport of CrossFit and its participants. Most higher level competitions generally don't even include the butterfly pull-up. They base standard starts around the chest to bar, 
which is a much harder, safer version of the butterfly. It's still not great on your body. However, the demands for the strength are far higher to complete a successful rep. Sticking to the basics like things like the scap, the strict, and the kipping pull-up have massive gains at a minimal cost on your body. So I highly recommend if you're an average Joe just looking at getting a little bit fitter, don't worry about the politics of CrossFit. Stick to your guns and build that back of yours. Those are my thoughts on the butterfly pull-up. What are yours? Like always, comment down below. Tell me exactly what you think of the butterfly pull-up, whether you do or you don't do CrossFit. And remember, this is a kipping pull-up. This is a butterfly pull-up. Let's not get these mixed up. But as always, stay a beast.